If you ever struggle with portraits, be sure of one thing, you are not alone. Likeness is always a challenge, even for experienced artists. Believe it or not, beginners and experienced artists face the same difficulties. They face the same proportion issues, the same problems of eyes being too close, too far apart, too high or too low, incorrect nose angle, etc. The only difference is that skilled artists know how to identify mistakes and fix them easily, almost instantly actually, so it looks as if they never had any difficulty in the first place. Well, this is not the case. A portrait is always a challenge, even for the greatest masters. It is said that Ang once cried about a supposed failed portrait, which would not look failed to any one of us, yet his drawings are among the finest and most beloved in the history of art. Portraiture is always a challenge for everyone. In this video, we'll look at the main problems you may encounter in your portrait drawings and discuss how to identify and solve them. A quick word about the demonstration you'll be watching in the background. This is a charcoal and white chalk drawing on cotton watercolor paper that I tinted beforehand with a critic mixture of blue, brown and black washed with water. As you can see, I chose to use myself as a subject for this portrait, but we'll come back to the specifics of self-portrait later in the video. I work from a photo for the video because a mirror would not have allowed me to create this chiaroscuro effect and film at the same time. And by the way, if you want to see the full uncut version of this drawing with commentary, you can join my Patreon and access the real-time version of this drawing, as well as many other drawing and painting videos. All right, let's start talking about why portraits are so damn hard to do. After laying down a few basic lines to place the face, I cover the whole drawing with a dark, soft charcoal background. The goal here is to break all the codes that allow me to identify this shape as my face and to draw it in a purely objective way, forgetting that it's myself that I'm drawing. My face is so familiar to me that I want to distance myself from what I know and draw only what I see, so I'll not try to draw my eyes, my nose, my mouth, my ears, but I'll treat my face as a pure form in black and white. Nothing is more familiar to us than the human face. But when you're in the shoes of an artist, this familiarity is a burden. As an artist, you have to look at things as pure appearance in all objectivity. In a way, you have to treat the face as any random object. For an artist on a purely technical level, there is basically no difference between drawing a face, an apple, and a jug, or whatever. I'm not talking about aesthetics and artistic choices here, but about the technique of representation. You do the same thing for drawing any object, and a face is no different. You have to be able to observe objectively, but it's very hard to do that for a face, because our familiarity with faces deceives us. The beginner tends to draw the elements of the face as he or she knows them. It's like a checklist, eyes, eyelids, eyebrows, eyelashes, nose, nostril, etc. That's what we know from a face, but we sometimes need to forget what we know. Here, for example, the visual reality is very different from this checklist. You can hardly see the eyes. Only the shape of the orbit in the shadow is visible. You can't see the nostrils. You have to observe objectively, draw only what you see, not what you know. It may seem strange, but in my head, I convince myself that this subject could just as well be an apple or a jug or whatever else. I try to work only with the shadow shapes without thinking about what they represent. Paradoxically, it's not because I know my face very well that I can draw myself easily. On the contrary, it's because I draw it as if it were an object that I don't know that I can draw it easily. The secret of portraiture is to distance yourself from the person you're drawing and represent their appearance in an abstract manner. It's often thought that a good portrait has an extra ounce of soul that the drawing conveys emotions, you know, 
This may be true, but it's not really something you can control. There is not a technique that allows you to infuse soul into the drawing. But there are techniques to draw shapes more accurately and become more efficient in terms of technique, purely technical. So let's stay down to earth. Let's focus on technique and accuracy. And only then will the extra ounce of soul come to life in the actual drawing. But this is something on another level. So the artist needs to look for geometric shapes in the subject and reproduce them as if they were abstract. In a portrait more than anywhere else, it's necessary to focus on shadow shapes and to simplify. Try to draw the shapes as precisely as possible without wondering if it is an eye or a mouth. Think of the structure of the shadow shapes as if it was pure geometry. Save the curves for later, start with straight lines, simplify as much as possible in the beginning. Then when things start to work together, gradually refine the shadows and the relationship between the different areas of the face. Eyes and mouth are not that important, more than merely a face. It's a real person that a portrait represents. It's a face that really exists. Portraiture is a delicate art, certainly one of the most difficult of all. The problem is not to draw someone's face, but that this face needs to be realistic, but also avoid the uncanny valley. This is this in-between area where things look realistic, but strange and remote at the same time. And again, there is no need to show your drawing to a renowned expert, anyone can see if there is something off in a portrait. The thing is, we are all experts in portrait critique, even people who know nothing of art. They can spot weird things in any portrait at any time. Beginners often think that the most important thing is therefore to be able to draw the eyes and the mouth very well, perfectly well, but in reality, they are of little importance in the likeness. In this drawing that you're seeing right now, the mouth is completely hidden in the shadow. It's the same for the eyes. Too much focus on the eye and mouth when it's not appropriate can lead you right into the uncanny valley. For example here, if I were to draw details of the eyes, like the eyelashes and eyelids, even though they are supposed to be hidden in the shadows, it would still look kind of realistic, but strange and unsettling at the same time. The mouth is also barely suggested. However, if I were to draw sharp details around the lips, it would look off. See, it doesn't matter if the eye or mouth looks convincing in itself. Too much focus when it's not needed can create a very disturbing effect. Indeed, the likeness doesn't come from features drawn individually, separately, next to each other, but it comes from the general proportions of the face seen all together. For example, the distance between the nose and the corner of the mouth, then the distance between the bottom, the lip and the chin, the shape of the eye socket, the shape of the forehead, the thickness of the cheekbones, etc. etc. This is the kind of morphological markers that facial recognition softwares analyze. So if you have trouble with portraits, work on proportions. Proportions again and again. In a portrait, true likeness can be a matter of a few thousands of a millimeter. The most important thing is not the design of the eye itself, but its position in relation to the forehead, the nose and the rest of the face. It's not how the feature is drawn, but how it relates to the other features as a whole. So avoid focusing on the eyes and the mouth and focus on proportions instead. Likeness is built little by little. If you think that you can achieve perfect likeness right from the start, you're deluding yourself. Likeness is built gradually, very gradually. So don't try to cheat by using copying devices to obtain an immediate likeness. It's the best way to have a rigid drawing 
and to understand nothing of your drawing. Draw without cheap tricks, without a miracle technique, but with your heart. And look for gradual but steady improvements in accuracy. And don't think that you can get it all at once in the beginning. It's much easier to draw a face than a portrait. And it's even easier to draw a head than a face. So start by drawing a simple head as if it was a very basic study just made out of very basic shapes. And then you add the elements to make the face appear by observing the distribution of shadows and lights. Finally, try to gradually improve this face to make it become the particular face of your model. And only then will this face start to become a portrait. Don't expect to have a perfect portrait from the beginning, it's impossible. Concentrate on the proportions and draw what you see with objectivity. The likeness is built gradually. If you've been around, you may know a couple of face drawing methods, such as, you know, taking a circle, then putting a second circle underneath, then drawing a line down the middle, etc. And by the way, if you don't know any of these methods, I recommend Andrew Loomis's method in his book, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth, which is very well done. There are many other methods to draw heads, but this one is pretty good. Anyway, most methods are interesting, especially at the beginning, but be aware that they only help to draw a face, not a portrait. So you'll have to give them up at some point. If you like to use these methods, I suggest that you use them only for the very first steps, especially for the placement and the tilt of the head, but don't rely too much on them as they won't be helpful for very long. These methods are based on canons, that is to say, on a set of dimensions and proportions deemed ideal to represent a face, but a face in general. Portraiture, on the other hand, consists in a focus on the specificities of the person. Canons and structural methods are only helpful in the very beginning. After a short while, the ideal features of the canon should give way to the particular features of the model. Whatever structural method you may use, a real person will never really fit into such a, an idealized mold. That's the difference between a face and a portrait. A portrait shows the specific proportions of the model. A portrait faithfully represents the particular features of the individual. So structural methods are not very helpful. They only create stereotypical faces. No need to see everything. A good portrait is as much about what it reveals as what it hides. You don't need to see everything to get a good likeness. Think about it. You can recognize a person from a distance during a foggy day and even when he or she is wearing a mask and half of the face is hidden. You don't need to see everything to recognize a face as the drawing I'm currently doing shows. Leaving areas in the shadow on purpose can create an interesting effect while making your life easier. There is no need to try to draw the detail of the eyelids and lashes individually a simple light stroke with an eraser is enough to suggest just enough to create a convincing impression. Of course, to have this sort of chiaroscuro effect, you have to place your model in the right conditions, with the right type of light, the right angle, the right position. If you're working from a photo, you have to take the right picture. Not every reference photo makes a good portrait. What if your problem with portraits is that you want to show too much for your own good? Has it ever crossed your mind? Too much light, too much detail, too much description. You don't draw a passport photo. There's no need to detail everything. Let your imagination go. Leave some parts unfinished, some parts in the shadows. Ask your model to partially cover his or her face with hands or with hair, play on the ambiguity between what is hidden and what is revealed and you will see that the likeness will be much more natural to get and at the same time you will struggle less to achieve it. 
persevere. Despite the difficulties, getting a portrait right is a great reward. Be persistent. It doesn't just happen like that. All successful portrait artists have gone through the same difficulties as you and they still encounter them in every drawing. These difficulties come from the inherent complexity of portraiture, it doesn't come from the artist. The idea is not to get rid of the difficulties but to practice enough so that you can solve them easily. See, when the beginner makes a mistake, he or she doesn't know exactly what is wrong and how to fix it. But when an advanced portrait artist makes a mistake, he or she can point to it and correct it immediately. So ultimately, it looks like no mistake was made. It's not true. Mistakes were made, but they were fixed immediately. Just know that reaching this level of fluency takes time and practice. Believe in yourself, because it's the only way for your portraits to convey sincere emotions. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Again, a big thank you to my Patreon members. This video wouldn't be possible without your support. If you want to join the community, you'll find the link in the description below. You'll also find the link to my two classes, my oil painting course and my color course. All right, that's it for today. As always, my friends, joy and inspiration to you. Bye.